Hello, welcome to Life Forever Fit. My name is Angela Esau and today I'm going to show you how to make the Tsui Bak. The Tsui Bak is a traditional Mennonite double bun. I am from Mennonite origins in Brazil and we grew up having these tsui bak pretty much in our table every single weekend. And so did my parents and so did their parents and it just been going on for generations. Saturday mornings was the day my mom would bake tsui bak. So she had this huge Tupperware container uh, tub, an enormous one and she would just, I, I don't even know if she had a recipe, she would just go put milk, um, flour, yeast, it was just all in her head. So she would put it all together and by the time I would get up, because she would get up really early, but by the time I would get up, that thing was already huge, growing, and she would make dozens of tsui bak. We wouldn't eat them up, of course, all in one weekend. She would bag them up and freeze them, and this way we had fresh tsui bak pretty much all week. It was an amazing experience. I think that a weekend without tsui bak was a very sad one. So it was a must to have these double buns in our culture. So I really love sharing this recipe with you right now. It's definitely something you can do too. The ingredients for you to make tsui bak are very simple. You will need three cups of warm milk, three teaspoons of instant active dry yeast, three teaspoons of sugar, three teaspoons of salt, one stick of butter, which is usually four ounces, then you will also need about seven cups of unbleached all-purpose white flour. At the end, you might need some extra oil while you're kneading it to dump on your tsui bak. I like to use olive oil, but canola oil will do. One oil that I recommend you do not use is coconut oil. It has way too much of a strong taste. It does not go well with tsui bak. For mixing up the dough, you might be using a machine or you will be using your hands. If you're choosing to do a machine, the difference is that the paddle will do the job. If you're doing by hand, you're the one who has to go ahead and punch. No matter if you're using a machine or uh, doing it by hand, mixing the ingredients into the bowl is the same. I'm gonna describe here how we're gonna do it by the machine and later on, um, I'll quickly um, go over how I do it by hand. So I grab the bowl that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna put in the three cups of milk. Make sure that the milk is warm, all right? That it's about comfortable to your hands. So if you heat it up so much that it stings your hands, it's too hot, all right? You gotta let it cool down until it's nice and comfy. After that, you need to put in the instant active yeast. It's three teaspoons. So make sure that you just put it evenly over the top of the milk and stir it a little bit um, with a spoon and let it sit there for just a couple, like a minute or so. Uh, next, you go ahead and put in three teaspoons of salt and three teaspoons of sugar. Also, for the butter, you need a stick of butter, which usually is a four ounce um, amount. The butter, you need to melt first. So take that stick of butter, put it inside a glass bowl and melt it for about 30 seconds. As for flour, you use more or less seven cups. And I say more or less because it usually depends what kind of flour you have. It could be around that number. Now, when you are starting to mix these ingredients, um, go ahead and Put in one cup of flour at a time. I start with three cups and then I mix, mix, mix. And from there, I just go ahead and do cup number four, cup number five, and by then you will see it's starting to become a little rougher. And by cup number six, it's definitely nice and hard. So after you put in the sixth cup of flour, you need to be very careful. Don't put in another full cup. Go and put in only half a cup and you need to really see what's going on with the dough. It takes some time, if you're doing it by machine, it takes some time to just get all that flour into the batch. So be patient, and what helps here is that you grab a jar of oil and just pour over the, the dough as it's forming. So as I mentioned earlier, it could be olive oil, it could be canola oil, vegetable oil, it doesn't matter. I prefer olive oil, I think it gives a nice little touch to it. And by the time that the dough is totally mixed, you have to maybe stop the machine for a little bit and touch it. And if it's very sticky, maybe you need another half cup of, uh, of flour. 
and um, are you gonna use another half cup to make it seven are you maybe gonna use seven and a half honestly you have to play it by year or pie side okay because it's it's not a magic formula each cup of flour could vary a little bit too so it really depends keep an eye on it and I'm sure you will hit the dough consistency correct so let the machine just do its job for a little while and you will see that the dough is starting to become completely loose it will not be sticky to the sides of the bowl anymore so when that's happening that's the sign that your dough is practically ready here we go the magic moment happens see how the dough is kind of like just swishing around there in the bottom without sticking to the pan beautiful that's how we like it and if you're doing it by hand grab a big bowl the biggest you have because this batch grows about nice like a basketball size maybe a little bigger so you need a big bowl okay so grab the biggest bowl you got put the ingredients in and um yeah you don't have a mixing paddle to do it so grab a big spatula and to start with just go and mix all right put all the ingredients in in the order i already mentioned while i was doing it with the machine and the same thing here the flour a cup at a time start with three go to four go to five and by then you will see that oh my gosh the spatula is not gonna work anymore and it's time to just dump that dough on the table and go from there so you need a clean table nice and roomy because the flour kind of goes all over the place so we make sure that you now start really punching that dough and um it's really on the feel yeah if it's very sticky to your hands then i'm sure you need another half a cup so play it by sight one more time it's about you know six and a half seven or seven and a half cups of flour okay make sure that you really feel the dough and that at the end when you have it all together and you kneaded it really well then it should be feeling like play-doh now the next step here is to take that dough that's nice and squishy like play-doh put it back in the bowl and it needs to rise it will rise best if its surrounding is warm so my trick here is to warm up your oven a little bit turn it off and then put the bowl into it covered with a towel and leave it there for about one hour now make sure that you're turning on that oven for about three minutes only and then please turn it off we're not baking anything here yet okay turn it off and um cover the dough and let it sit there one hour should be enough after one hour is over you will notice that your dough doubled or tripled the size and that's exactly what you want if that happened your uh, your yeast worked well and it's gonna be great it is time now to take the dough out of the oven it was growing really well it's nice and big and fluffy and bring it back to your table and first thing you need to get baking sheets um i use about two or three if i'm making double buns of course i will need less sheets if i'm making only single buns then i will use another sheet for sure for you to make tzwiebak you don't have to double them up like um, the picture in this video here earlier showed you uh, you might just want to do single buns that sometimes it's just a little faster i do that quite a bit actually but if you want to do it as a double bun for fun well then you need to make sure that you get the size correct now to form the bun is quite interesting there's like a special technique to do that and i will tell you right away what not to do so please don't just grab a piece of dough roll it up and put it on the baking sheet that's not how you do it there's a special way of getting that bun nice and round first of all grab a batch of uh, of dough don't grab the whole thing just about a batch that fits in your hand nice and comfy and with your um hand kind of form um, a bun between your thumb and your index and then squeeze it through that's called the pinching pinching tzwiebak that's what you're doing so you have to squeeze it through pluck it off and put it on the pan okay makes sense uh, it doesn't kind of like look too good right away but with practice it will come if you're deciding to do a double bun well the bottom ones need to be slightly bigger than the small ones always always pinch tiny okay so even the bottom ones they should be bigger pinch them small because these buns are going to grow a little bit more still pinch them small 
and then fill the tray. And then if you want to do the double bun, pinch an even smaller little uh, bun and put it on top. Now these little guys on top, they're always rebels. They will always slide down and um, you will kind of like fight with them a little bit, but that's okay. What you have to do is always bring them up, bring them up, kind of squeeze them down a little bit. At some point they stop sliding because this dough, it's still growing. So once you have a baking sheet uh, filled with them, you have to let it sit for maybe another hour if you have the time. If you're a little bit in a hurry, well, maybe 45 minutes, 40 minutes will do. Now, as the, the, the dough is growing, it kind of like, you know, the, the bottom bun and the top bun kind of blend into each other and they start staying put. So eventually that top bun does not topple over anymore. Now about baking the buns, it takes more or less 45 to 50 minutes to bake them. I like to bake two uh, baking pans at the same time. So I put one on the top, one in the bottom. I turn on the heat at about 350. I will not turn any higher because that will burn the edges of the buns and the middle of the baking sheet is going to be too raw. Now I do about 350 for the very first 25 minutes. Then I rotate the sheets. I will take the one that is in the top, put it in the bottom and the one in the bottom goes in the top. I will then let it go for another 15 minutes. Of course, you have to be present. You have to keep an eye, peek in and see if the buns are becoming nice and golden. Uh, sometimes they deceive you. Mm -hmm. They look nice and golden on the top and then you're like, yay, they're ready. I don't need to do it any longer. It's done. And when you bring them out and they cooled off and you you know, um, dump them into like a container or something, you will see that the bottom was completely undone. So that's yeah, something to be careful about. So make sure that the first part of your baking is about 25 minutes, rotate them, and then it's mm, an average of about 15 to another 20 minutes. It depends on your oven. Each oven is slightly different. Mine is a gas oven. If you have an electric one, um, maybe things might be a little faster. I don't know. And you have to kind of adjust uh, the temperature as well. These double buns are delicious. And um, when I make them, I do make two of these batches sometimes. But then the good thing is, they last for a long time. I bag them, put them in the freezer, and then every time I want a fresh bun, I just take one out, defrost, put them in a toaster oven, and oh boy, they're so good. <laughs> yes, so go ahead, give it a try. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you feel inspired to make these double buns as well. Um, one thing I like about making bread at home is that you know exactly what you put inside your bread. It takes time, yes, so block a time for you to do this and give it a try. Get the kids involved. They love punching that dough. It's just hilarious. So do that. Enjoy, freeze them, and have your own bread, your own double buns ready to go throughout the week with you. And if you feel inspired and if you like to do this recipe as well, I would love to hear from you. So subscribe, like the video, send a comment, and happy cooking to you. Take care.